This is a swan neck mount wing. Now, these became very commonplace in Le Mans lately, and they've also been used in a not so obvious sense in things like Formula One for quite some time now. And I did a brief segment on this on my Koenigsegg one to one video of the minor advantages of swan neck wings. But in this video, I'm going to go a bit more in depth on why the swan neck exists and what it actually does. Now, its foundation in Le Mans was they originally had larger wings and then rules tried to bring back the aerodynamics a bit to try and lower costs and lower speeds, etc, etc. So they shrunk the size of the rear wing. Of course, teams to get this back wanted to get more downforce out of that wing, right? So you could run a more aggressive angle. But then a few teams worked out that you could rearrange where the wing supports were and then get your wing to work a little bit more efficiently. So that is the basis of where the swan neck in the sense that you see it here came about. And the reason that's so is because on the top surface of a wing, we have a positive pressure gradient. So it's favorable pressure gradient, flow is going to stay attached here unless you push it really hard. Whereas on the underside of the wing, we have a low pressure region with an adverse pressure gradient as it goes towards the trailing edge. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that along the underside of the wing, if this was the leading edge here, and that's the trailing edge there, we see the pressure goes down to a suction peak and then comes back. Now, this area from here to here, the pressure is increasing. So if we just looked at the flow from here, we can see that this is going to see effectively a positive pressure from where it is. So the flow is being forced backwards and, well, being forced forward, sorry. And the point of this is that it makes it hard for the flow to go somewhere. So if you watch my video on vortex generators and how they work, you'll see that it talks about boundary layers, separation, and how the adverse pressure gradient causes that. The fundamental gist here though, is that adverse pressure gradients cause separation. Wing stall is exceeded when the adverse pressure gradient is too severe. Of course, having your adverse pressure gradient large means the small disturbances can trip the boundary layer on the wing into causing a large scale separation. Now, if we have our supports coming underneath the wing here, we can see that the incoming flow will be disturbed by them. If we're staring at the bottom of the wing from below, let's approximate our mounts as not very aerodynamic shapes, okay? We can see that behind here, you're gonna get an inherent wake structure. This is because the flow is coming up here and these are objects. Of course, if these are already producing some sort of wake and we're already approaching the critical adverse pressure gradient here to cause stall, these can trip this area here to separate off the wing. This can cause substantial losses in downforce. I believe Mulsanne's Corner did an article on it where they found about 30% downforce loss and verified this as consistent against Le Mans teams. That's obviously not great. However, if you think about this for a second, if you streamline these profiles and then just locally backed off the wing near them, you probably wouldn't see this separation. That begs the question of why you wouldn't just use streamlined profiles along the bottom for your supports, work the wing a tiny bit less around the supports and still have your bottom support. Why would you come up with the swan neck? And the answer is more complicated as it always is. And it's to do with yaw. As my very crudely drawn car here passes through a corner, it's going to be pointing in at some angle, okay? The rear tires here will have a slip angle such that it's pointing into the corner to an extent, even if I haven't drawn it terribly well. The result of this is that it's kind of sliding around the corner a little. So it will see a relative wind coming at an angle to it. And this is known as the yaw condition, where the car is at an angle of yaw to the wind. Now this causes a lot of things on the car to behave aerodynamically quite different. And none the least, including the wing supports. And flicking over to our bottom down view from before, we can see that if we have our streamlined wing supports on the bottom and we change the flow direction so that it's coming from a little bit of the side instead of dead on, that these are now going to be acting like wings at angles of attack. Now your angle may only be three or four degrees. So these aren't going to be making huge lift, but 
they're already in a region of near critical adverse pressure. So you end up with a bit of flow separation off here and the 3D effect will roll onto flow separation off the wing surface itself. So you'll end up with big separator regions there and there once you get into any sort of corner. And this is very non-ideal. However, if you were to move these out of the region of critical adverse pressure, you would find that if this is your streamlined support here, this will still be getting the effect of the yaw wind coming on it, right? But because it's only at four degrees, it's not gonna separate. The flow on it's gonna stay attached and there's no 3D effects going on here because you've simplified into two 2D objects. This back bit here now no longer has the support on it. We'll have a bit of cross flow from the yaw, so you'll end up with problems at the end plate, but nothing substantial in the center because now it's just the adverse pressure gradient from the wing as it was intended to be. So you can see that by moving the mount off the lower surface, we have greatly improved the performance of the wing. And that's the reason why swan neck mounts exist, is to make sure you don't get flow separation around your wing mounting points on the lower surface. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time. Thank you.